Hi everyone, welcome to In Conversation with VMware. This is the latest in a series of conversations that explore how people and organizations within Canada are thinking about technology and adapting to a changing digital world. My guest today is Dr. Jacqueline Ottman, President of First Nations University of Canada. As the only national Indigenous owned post secondary institution in Canada, First Nations University is a unique place of higher learning. It specializes in Indigenous education for Indigenous and non Indigenous peoples of all cultural backgrounds. Welcome, Dr. Ottman, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you, Claude, and thank you, VMware. And I think we are, we are on and a very good journey. So in the tech industry, we don't always understand the barriers that diverse students face when trying to enter our industry. This is why partnerships like this are important for tech companies like VMware, as well as prospective students. Part of the effort is increasing understanding. So I was wondering if you could speak to the challenges and opportunities Indigenous students often face when pursuing careers in the tech sector. One of the um, primary issues and ongoing issues is that uh, many of our First Nation schools um, don't have the STEM resources or educators needed to uh, support students um, in these areas. And, and um, all of that is needed to inspire uh, careers in the technology um, areas. And, um, and so the reason that, that our First Nation schools may not have um, these resources or the educators is due to chronic underfunding that our on-reserve um, education systems have. Another area is um, reliable internet. So connectivity is is another ongoing challenge that that our our students face and and um, many if they are learning in community. Um, may have to go to, let's say, the administration building or um, an elementary or high school to get um, reliable connectivity. And we know that um, in this area of, of um, STEM, um, that there's only four, about 4% 4 of Indigenous peoples are in the labor force, whereas there's about, you know, 10% uh, non-Indigenous peoples or non-Indigenous Canadians are are in this area, but if if we can support um, Indigenous youth um, and students in STEM fields or in technology, then um, or provide them training and they're hired, um, then those statistics really level out. So you touch on a lot of points that are an issue well beyond Indigenous students, well beyond the Indigenous community. But it sounds like the impact or the, the gap is even bigger for Indigenous students. There's a lot of data on STEM and there's not enough students entering STEM broadly across the economy. And, and but there's tremendous opportunity. So getting that 4% up to that 10% number and even higher, we need to be higher than 10% to feed the the, the technology needs of the future. And it's also critical for our students to uh, to have more access to technology technology training in general again, to be able to to adapt to a changing world and uh, to be prepared for the ever-changing economic landscape to have access to all of these employment opportunities, as you said, to move from that 4% to that 10%. And, um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll all benefit. And I also believe that in addition to possibly being hired um, within technology companies, there's opportunity to be entrepreneurs um, and to inspire engagement through Indigenous businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, and so with these kinds of partnership, um, as you know, the partnership between First Nations University and VMware, we are contributing to economic reconciliation. This is about us working together for a better future, right? It is, definitely. And um, 
that's really what um, the very first treaty was founded upon that particular principle is working alongside each other in moving towards a common vision. So what types of careers can students expect with this type of training? Um, so the career opportunities inside of tech are wide. If we just look at some of the VMware courses they could they could take and stuff, um, they, cloud is a huge conversation point in the world, right? Everyone knows what cloud, oh, that's that tech stuff that happens somewhere. Well, it happens in the real world. There's real cloud technology. For example, the VMware course is available for First Nations University students opens the door to learning the skills to be able to manage. When you look at your phone and you're one of 3 million people running that application, there's a massive amount of infrastructure out in the cloud making that happen. Well, those are the type of careers. You could be involved in developing the next app. You could be involved in supporting the infrastructure, selling the infrastructure. Um, uh, there's, there's so many different industries or so many different areas in our industry so software engineers and sales, near and dear to me, because I've had both those jobs in my career, but also on the developer side, what we call engineers inside of VMware. This technology, it, like I mentioned about our industry, it changes continuously. That demands a lot of new thinking, a lot of engineering, a lot of coding. And, and those are great careers. They're careers that allow a lot of, believe it or not, coding is a lot of creativity. You have a problem and there is, 20 ways to solve that problem and every individual will approach it slightly differently and come up with creative ways to do it. And the nice thing is, and you and I have talked about this, Dr. Ottman, most of the jobs, no one's asking you to move anywhere. No one's asking you to leave your community. Nobody's saying, you know what, to do this, you have to go there. At one point, there is job choices that, yeah, you do have to do that, right? But so much in our industry has nothing to do with where you are. It's what value and what can you offer, you know, in the industry. And people are very happy to leverage that, to pay well, and never ask you to leave your community. Yeah, and, and that's something that our Indigenous communities are also wanting, especially our rural and remote, our northern communities don't want um, to see their their youth um or their populations leave their community. And, um, and what they're finding is that um, once, um, once the youth leave community for educational op opportunities or employment opportunities um, in the South, they don't return. And, um, and so if there were more, um, more employment opportunities to where um, people can stay at home, then they contribute can contribute to the economy and um, and socioeconomic initiatives within their community. So that's um, that's amazing. And um, the monetary return, the contribution, if we did um, support um, the indigenous youth population uh, through education or training, into the workforce is approximately 27.7 billion annually. And again, you know, when we have these kinds of partnerships, there is that, that um, economic reconciliation, but it's also um, bigger than that. It's contributing to the overall um, strength um, of, of, our, of our country, really. Our industry is not the, the poster child for quality or all diversity, right? We're, we're, we've had our challenges as well. I think by investing in students and investing in indigenous students, more female students in STEM, more minorities in STEM, all that different thing, we're going to end up with a better ecosystem. And we know that when you have a diverse group, you get better ideas. You get just better outcomes all around. Diversity is a fact. Um, inclusion is a choice and equity is an outcome. And, um, and so this is again, what we're, what we're doing here. Um, and I just appreciate that, that you do recognize that um, in, in becoming more inclusive, that, that we are um, seeing 
various perspectives that, that are going to enrich the work that we're doing. So thank you again, Dr. Ottman, for being here. I do have one final question. This is a tough one, right? This is the, the, the one I waited for. So what could tech companies do differently to help Indigenous students and workers? I would like to see um, tech companies um, begin inspiring Indigenous youth very early on. I would ask the industry to reach out and, and invite um, indigenous uh, youth, whether it's through um, through co-ops or internships or or summer summer camps. Um, again, all of that. There's this uh, phrase. Um, it's you have to inspire before before you can motivate someone to action. That was an awesome uh, set of asks, Dr. Oppmann. I think you put um, a lot of our industry on notice that there's things we can do and there's, there's, there's challenges to be met. So I'm very, very, very happy to be here with you today and having this important discussion. VMware is proud to be partnering with First Nations University. We challenge all our peer organizations to step up and be part of the solution, part of the economic reconciliation. So thank you very much, Dr. Ottman. As always, it's a pleasure being with you. Thank you, Claude. And um, I really have appreciated the invitation to have a conversation with you today. Look out for our next conversation with VMware, and I'm wishing everyone an amazing day.